section and boys let's remain here amen amen now uh i think rose bell can introduce us can do this I'll, i'll jump from the bible oh. <laughs> thank you madam rose bella can kindly carry it let's applaud her good afternoon Hi. Hi. From up here, I'm seeing very beautiful and handsome faces. Wow. Yeah? Yes. And I'm, uh, I'm glad to be among us to this, uh, is it afternoon or evening? <laughs> yeah, this evening. My name is Rosbella Akini. I hope the guys at the back can hear me. Nan uh -huh. yeah? Volume 12, huh? <laughs> yeah. 25% okay. louder. I'll try, I'll yes. try. I'll try, but, but then I don't have that strong voice like this. Um, my name is Rosbella Kinyi, and uh, I'm from an organization called uh, FCF. Okay? FC? FCF. Uh, you'll soon be getting to know what we are all about, what we do, and why we are here. Okay? So just be patient and uh, 
we'll have more time with you to discuss a lot and to give you knowledge on so many important things that you need to know as young people in the society. Sasawa. So just be patient with us, give us your ears, okay? And stay humble until we are through. Of course, we'll be coming more often. This is just the beginning. To make a revision. Are we right? So, um, with us, uh, we have uh, our colleagues that we work with. I'll introduce them. Okay? You want to know them as well? Yes. Yeah, I'll introduce them. So, please, all of us, can we just... My colleagues, can we just... <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Me, me, I'm called Jonathan William O'Toole. I'll be bringing you a message from the Bible. I'm from USA. And we also want to introduce the founder of FCF, Algis Casambelli. Hello, Abari Zenyu. Mko salama. Mimi naituwa Algis Casambelli. Ni meokoka Kristo ni buwana. Uh, na mimi ndio founder wa Fearless and Cherished Foundation ambayo ilianza 2007 uh, tunashukuru Mungu kwa sababu saa hizi we have 31 kids some of them they are finished high school uh, na wengine wako high school na wengine wako college na wengine wako primary school na tunashukuru maana ya kukutana na wanafunzi kama nyinyi tutakuwa tukiwatembelea hapa tukiwahimiza hali ya maisha Bona asifiwe sana. Ali ya nini? Ali ya nini? Maisha. Unajua most of them, most of nini mkinapo toka hapa shule, wakati mumemaliza shule mkiwele huko inje, mkiwa sahi shule munaona maisha ni raisi. Sini ukweli? Lakini unapu kutoka huko inje, unapata ya kwamba maisha ni tofahuti. Maisha ni? Tofahuti. Kwa hivyo tunashukuru kukuwa hapa, I think tutajifunza Mengi saidi na mungu wa wabariki. Is that long? Yes. Good afternoon, citizens. Yes, my name is Zablon Bosire, as we have heard. Uh, I'm happy to be here with you this afternoon. And I want to encourage you for this program that is ahead of you. It's something that is going to help you in the near future. And it's something that you'll be experiencing in daily life. And I hope you take it positively because Amen. it's something that is going to affect your life. So please be attentive for whatever our <coughs> facilitators are going to, to pass to you. Uh, take note because it's part of the teaching program and <coughs> it's part of you, it's part of life. Thank you very much and do have a good afternoon. Now, now we're going to read from the Word of God, the living Word of God. Amen? Amen. The Word of God. As I'm reading from the Bible, Brother Zablon, Buona Zablon, will be taking volunteers to hand out these models. I'll talk more about these models later, but you be careful with them. Each student should receive one model and one small card. So will you help Buona Zablon to do this? I want uh, five, five volunteers, five students who can volunteer to help me pass the five of them. It's okay, it's okay. Come. Come. Mary had a baby, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord, yes, my Lord. Amen. Mary had a baby, but not just any baby. Is that right? <laughs> yes, my Lord, glory. Can you say glory? Glory. Of your full attention at this time. 
We normally talk about that story of Joseph and of Mary and the baby Jesus at Christmas time. Christmas time, see here. Let me read to you today, because Christmas, if you know Jesus Christ, let me tell you, Christmas is for all the time, isn't it? The significance of the fact that God became man, that Jesus was born, is significant not only Christmas season, but all the time, isn't it? Let's read from the Gospel of Matthew. If you have your Bible, if you don't, you just listen to me. I'll read from Matthew chapter 1. Now we know the Annunciation. Matthew does not re record the Annunciation. That is when the angel Gabriel, you know, the angel Gabriel told Mary that she would become pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Sindio, she never knew a man. She never had sex. She was a virgin. Sindio, Matthew picks up after the Annunciation, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. And it says, verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privily. That means quietly, quietly. I'm using an older version of English. But while he, while Joseph, thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, Joseph, you son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary for your wife. For that which is conceived of her is from the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Verse 21. And she, this is Mary, shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for Jesus shall save his people from their sins. Verse 22. Now all this was done that it may be fulfilled what was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. And may the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen? Amen. 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 How many people here, how many young men and young women are 15 or 14 years old? Raise your hand. If you are 15 or 14. Or if you are younger, younger than 15 or 14. I think, that, I think that's about half. About half. Maybe one time. You feel? 15 or 14. You know, the Bible doesn't tell us, it doesn't tell us anywhere in the Bible exactly the age that Mary was when she became pregnant of the Holy Ghost. Do you know that? But according to tradition, what Christians know, what we've heard through our tradition, is that probably, are you listening to me? Probably Mary was about 14 or 15 years old. Did you know that? 14 or 15 years old. In other words, many of you here are the age that Mary was at the time she conceived God the Son. Cindy. Kitting me. And the rest of you, you're near that age, aren't you? Younger, a bit younger, a bit older. I want you to consider something and think about this and look in your heart and imagine, imagine the danger. As we read the Bible, we know the end of the story. See, Leo? Amen? We know how it went with Mary. For her, she didn't know. She only knows what the angel told her, and that she must trust God. Amen? But just imagine when God sent him his son as a baby into the world. He didn't choose a mighty warrior. He didn't choose an, an older lady with much experience. He chose a young woman the age of many of you young women and young men. Are you kidding me? He put her not only in the danger of having to face the community, which would assume, as Joseph assumed, before he knew, what is reasonable to assume. We know 
when we see a woman become pregnant, we know it is not a virgin. It's India. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. It is reasonable. Assumption. So not only did God place her, this young woman, near your age, in a position to face the scorn of the community, the questions of the community, all that pressure coming down on her, but also he placed her in a position where not only would it be the community looking at her in a bad way, but God knew the king, you remember King Herod, yeah. King Herod, the one who wanted to kill the baby Jesus. You see, this 14 or 15 year old girl was placed in the most dangerous situation. No one could handle it without the power of God. Amen? What you need to consider, yes, I know we are not all very. Angels have not appeared to us all. And I guarantee you, when you become pregnant, it will not be a budget bar. You understand? And it should be with you. When you make a girl pregnant, it should be your wife. But we know we make many mistakes. We have made mistakes. We make mistakes. But nonetheless, consider, consider the reason that Jesus came into the world. In the form of a baby, a tiny baby in the womb of a woman, and came into the world in the hands of a 14 or 15 year old girl. That pressure that was upon her, and that threat, and that danger, let me tell you, that danger is facing all of us. Because Satan hates the womb of a woman. Do you hear what I said? Repeat after me. Satan hates the womb of a woman. The reason, the reason that Satan hates the womb of a woman, if you have not guessed from this story, from what you know of the Bible, is because God himself, the living God, was not ashamed to be found in the womb. Every time Satan sees that a child is conceived in this world, whether it is in marriage, whether it is through fornication outside of marriage, whether it is in the worst circumstances, I mean the worst, rape, incest, nonetheless, that child, that child has a purpose, and Satan sees that child as a threat. Are you kidding me? Are you understanding? Even the most despised child may be conceived with disease, may be conceived in a bad, bad, horrible circumstance. Nonetheless, it's a human being. The same image that Jesus Christ was inside of the womb of Mary. Symbio. So one thing I want you to glean from this Christmas story, which we know is relevant to us, not only Christmas time, but day by day by day by day, isn't it? If we are Christians, if we are not faking, if we are serious Christians, pay attention to me, the conception of God in the womb of a woman, there is nothing more important to say. There is nothing more important. And when any woman conceives a child, yes, it is not true of God in birth, but that child is in the image of who? Of who? God. The image of God. The image of God. And therefore Satan knows, even if no one else except God knows, Satan knows every child, no matter the circumstances of that conception, when a child is conceived, that child is a potential threat to the kingdom of darkness. That child is a vessel made in the image of God with the capacity if God puts his finger on that child, the capacity to destroy. Are you kidding me? To destroy those works of Satan, those works of darkness. It is for this reason that not, not only as we have read, I know you know in the Bible about baby Moses. Simeon, you remember not only was baby Jesus threatened by King Herod, but baby Moses before, threatened by Pharaoh, isn't it? Why does Satan take these men in power and, and, and push them to kill innocent children? Do you remember what happened? 
uh, Pharaoh was not able to catch Moses, was he? He did not, he did not. But he killed many, 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 many innocent children. Trying to get that one. Simeon, trying to get that one. Likewise, Herod, who had the same wicked, satanic spirit that Pharaoh had. In the attempt to kill baby Jesus, he killed innocent children in Bethlehem. Do you remember the story? My point is this. Do not despise your body. Do not despise yourself. And do not despise your potential. The same potential that Mary had is the same potential, and that Joseph had, is the same potential that you have. Because Jesus came not just for that one time, but to redeem us. See, yes. To redeem our lives, our bodies, that includes our wombs, our reproduction, our sexuality. And to deliver our sins and take us from that position of confusion, and to redeem our lives and the lives of our children. Because the Bible says the promise is not only for you, but also for your descendants, your children. Amen? Amen? So consider the faithfulness of God when Mary was faithful to what the angel said and Joseph was faithful to what the angel said. You see, when men and women work together and collaborate together in obedience to the Word of God to protect children, to protect sexuality, to protect the womb, when that happens, when that happens, <coughs> Satan trembles. Light goes out from that faith that they exercise into all their community, into all the world. And this is the reason why Satan, who is not like God, he does not have unlimited resources. You know that. Satan is not infinite. We serve a God who is the only infinite one. Sindio. Amen. Amen. Satan is powerful in a certain way. <coughs> Would we sing, God, we raise you higher, Satan, lower, lower. Sindio. Yes. Even children sing like that. Lower, 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 lower. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to give Satan too much credit. His power comes from darkness and confusion. <coughs> and so if he can take that perversion, that darkness, and that confusion, and direct it in one place, only one place for Satan to direct his limited resources. Satan will direct them to your sexuality and to mine, to the womb of a woman, to the seed of a man, to confuse young men and to confuse young women as early as he can get his claws on them and make them confused about sexuality. Because every child that he sees coming into this world. He sees another potential Jesus Christ. Not that that child will be Jesus Christ. But do you know what the word Christian means? Who knows? Christian. How many Christians are here? How many Christians? Okay, good. Now put your hands down. And who knows what the word Christian means? You should, you should be laughing to yourselves now. <laughs> Can you tell me, young? Yes. Thank you so very much. That's exactly right. Can you clap? If you could not hear what he has said, what is your name? Peter Wakesha. Sorry? Peter Wakesha. Peter Wakesha. Yes. yes. Now, what Peter has said, <laughs> thank you, Peter, is that a Christian is a chosen or anointed one. So Christ, he was the son of David, the anointed one, right? So to be a Christian is to be another Christ. No, you are not Jesus Christ himself, but Jesus Christ, the living Christ, lives in you. You understand? He lives in you. He lives through you and through your children, through faith. For you to be another, like Christ, another little anointed one. And not only for you, for a child you were conceived. Or if you're a man for a child, you might be the father for. No matter the circumstances. Are you hearing me? No matter the circumstances. God, the infinite God, has the means to help us through those circumstances. Amen? Amen.
He helped Mary. He helped Joseph. And he will help us. Can we pray? Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, we thank you for sending your son in the form of a baby in the womb of a holy and innocent woman. God, through your blood now, because of her faith and your power, we have the means ourselves to become holy, to become innocent, God, through the confession of sins, and through humility, and through repentance. We thank you for what you have done. God, let our words now, let our meditation as we go forward, as we look at these evil things, now we've looked at these things that you have done, and we glorify you for what you did through Mary. We glorify you for the good things you've done through Joseph. Now help us, God. Open our minds. Bless the reading of your word and open our minds so that we can know the good from the evil and we can choose right so that Satan will be confused in this place and the confusion he wanted to create will be dispelled through the power of light and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I had three volunteers already to hold some signs here. Has everyone received a model and a card? Everyone has. There's no one who has skipped. I would ask my three young men who helped me put up these banners to come forward here, please. Where are you? Where are they? They are coming now. They are coming now. Thank you. As they come, let me talk to you about these models. These plastic models you have been given, they are not for you to chew, like you chew a, a kalamu, bairo, okay? They are not for you to throw away. They are not toys to be given to your uh, two-year-old sister. Are you getting me? Someone spent money to bring these from USA for you, okay? Someone sacrificed. I know that person. They sacrificed. This information is for you to educate yourself and not only yourself, to keep and be a caretaker, a steward. Are you kidding me? You know what is a steward? Be a good steward of these models and the card that goes with them. This card is like a bath certificate for this baby. This baby uh, is a model of a child, I believe, it is uh, 12 weeks from some step. And that information on that card is there for you, not only to educate yourself, but when you see a young man, when you see a young woman who is connected to, whether in this school, or another school, or anywhere, who is connected to a crisis pregnancy, a pregnancy which has come unexpected. Are you kidding me? Now you will have this model, you will have this card. See, Neil, because you didn't throw it in the trash, because you didn't step on it, you didn't give it to the baby brother. Is that right? You didn't chew on it. I don't want to see you piercing them for a key ring. This is information for your benefit and to save the lives of others, okay? So I'd ask my three volunteers to take the ones which were tied, only those three, <coughs> and open these books for me now. One by one by one. And I'll explain this for you. And I need another another volunteer. I need one more young man or young woman. Who will come? Will you come? Please come. I think I need one more. One more. I understand. The first time I've seen these images, I cried. I cried. So let me explain. Yes, mommy, it's One more. One more. You understand? Every day in this country and around the world, people kill one another. For many reasons. Most of them unjustified. You're kidding me. You understand? Here is a baby boy, a young boy, even not a baby, a young boy in Rwanda. We know the genocide in Rwanda years ago. Hutus killing Tutsis. 
Cindy, this is a boy. I don't know whether he's Hutu or Tutsi. But he was killed through genocide. Genocide, if you don't know the word, you've studied the classification system of biology, isn't it? If you've studied that classification system uh, given to us by the man uh, Linnaeus, you see he, he divided uh, creatures into species, genus, families, those categories. Symbio. Yes. Genocide, it's a Latin word, genus meaning a category, a class. A class, so you have four classes here in this high school. A class, genus. Genocide, side means to kill. Genocide is when you kill people, when you kill human beings based on a particular category, a particular, a particular class into which those people fit. If you kill old people, it's a genocide. You're killing them because they're old. If you kill people because of their tribe, like this boy, that is genocide. Getting me. Killing people because of the category that you have chosen to kill people that fall in that category. You're getting me. When you murder people because of those characteristics. Another genocide, this is a mouth, this is a baby, 10 weeks, smaller than that baby, the model you're holding in your hand there. Two weeks younger, first trimester, legally killed with a suction machine by abortionists in America. 60 million, 60 million babies legally killed in America, like this, since the time that the Americans, which is my country, legalized baby murder through abortion. You see how Satan has done. You see how he has targeted the most innocent and most defenseless people. Because he doesn't want to see more people. Every person is another potential. Jesus Christ. You're kidding me. Again here, nine weeks. Now, three weeks younger than the baby you're holding, the model in your hand. Killed by abortion. Unchrist-like Christians hate conflict more than they hate evil. What does this mean? It means when you see an innocent person being victimized, whether killed or abused, whether abused with violence or with sexual violence or with beating, when you see the innocent and innocence being destroyed and just to avoid conflict, just to avoid disturbance, just to get along, just out of timidity, just out of shyness, you just keep quiet, you turn your head, like that story of the Good Samaritan, you getting me? The priest, the Levite, they just go, whatever your reason, you walk away, you walk by, you don't speak up. That's because you say you're a Christian, but you hate conflict more than you hate evil. Speaking of evil, again, first trimester, 10 weeks, the same age as this baby here, now slaughtered by abortion. By abortion. These who cannot see, I want to ask you to lift it and walk down the line, okay? Just walk down there, then you can roll it out. Again, now, those three first trimester. You know pregnancy divided into first, second, and third trimester. You know that. Pregnancy is divided into first trimester, three months, second trimester, three months, and then seventh, eighth, ninth month, the third trimester. Okay? Second trimester. This baby, we have given this baby. He did not have a name. We call him Malachi. He was discovered behind an abortion clinic 21 weeks after conception. 21 weeks. This baby boy was torn apart limb from limb through abortion, through abortion, because the mother chose, I don't know if the father cared, maybe he didn't, maybe he pressured her, maybe he didn't want, but the mother chose to kill that child instead of giving life. Again now, a bit more rare, but it happens, thousands and thousands in my own country, I can speak of my country, but I've also seen babies in this country, I've seen the pictures, in fact, my wife 
who is the videographer here. I neglected to introduce her. Her name is Jane. My wife with the camera here, only three weeks ago, discovered a baby here in Nakuru, like this, in a paper bag in the sewage. A dead baby girl. Hey, this baby girl was killed through abortion in USA. If she had been born, she could have lived. Are you hearing me? If they had not torn her head off, if they had not ripped her arms off, she could have lived outside the womb. You see the minds when Satan comes into a culture. When Satan comes into a country, as he has my country, the USA, and when people remove the protection from innocent children, and when people begin to treat their own sexuality like it's just a toy, like I told you not to, not to treat this model like a toy, but let's say you chew on this model, or, you, or you, you ignore me, the consequences are small, isn't it? It's not a person. It's not a person. It's just a, a thing, a thing. But when you begin to treat your sexuality, your bodies, like toys, like playthings, when you begin to ignore the rules, someone will suffer. And let me tell you, not only will these innocent children suffer through this genocide of abortion, you too can suffer. Those people who killed them also, because God is an avenger. Can you repeat after me? God is an avenger. Amen. Amen. God is a father to the fatherless. God is an advocate for widows and orphans. Now, even if your mother is alive, and your father is technically alive, if they want to do this to you, let me tell you something, you're an orphan. You're kidding me. In fact, you would be better off if your mother and father were dead than to have a mother and father who would do this to you. So that means that person is an orphan. Hey, God has marked this person. God forgives us when we repent, even of abortion. Even of abortion. There's no sin beyond the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Nonetheless, it is much, much, much better that we refrain from sin. Because even when Jesus forgives us, we still have those consequences in this life. Isn't it? King David committed adultery, and he committed murder. And he repented, didn't he? Didn't he? King David, he repented. And Jesus, God, forgave him. God forgave David. But David still had to live with those consequences. So the reason we're showing you these images is to put in your mind, so it will be in the front of your mind, what are the consequences? Because yes, we want people to repent, but it is much better than that you kill someone and then repent. It is much better you keep your hands back from shedding innocent blood. The book of Proverbs, Solomon says, God hates six things. And then he adds one, seven things. The Lord says are abomination. Chief among those, and if you read, and I encourage you to read the book of Proverbs, especially for people of all ages, but especially for young people, read the Proverbs of Solomon. Chief among those things that God hates the most, chief among them are hands that shed innocent blood. Amen? You're getting me. Hands that shed innocent blood. So thank you to my volunteers. You can roll up these signs.